Welcome to part number 43 of Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec. This is the Movie Chicane, and today we're going to be doing the DTM Championship. And for this event, we're going to be using the apt Audi TTR Touring Car from 2002. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Gus. Anyways, um... Let's go ahead and do the DTM Championship now, because that's the next extreme event that I feel like doing. Here it is, German Touring Car Championship. Three races, Capering once again, Nürburgring GPD, which is not really a track that this game goes too often, and then the Norschleife. So for this race, I'm going to have Weber drive again. Because none of my drivers are anywhere near starting in DTM. So, yeah, I mean, don't really have a choice here. There's never shit when you look in the UCD. You have to look really hard, that's the thing, dude. The thing with the UCD is that you have to get really, 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 really lucky to even find anything decent. Oh, the formula, the FGT. Yeah, dude. You know, finding the FGT, that took me like three days to do that, dude. It took me three days to find the freaking FGT. Me too, GTSV. I hate that shit as well. Which is why I did the B spec first, so that way I don't have to worry about level grinding and A spec for like licenses and stuff, which is dumb. You find the Fiat 500, you unlucky soul. <laughs> Anyways, round one is the DTM Championship. Green. So we're back at Cape Ring again. Then we go back to the Nurburgring again. Hmm, feels like we were just here not too long ago. <laughs> Friggin' UFC. I'll bypass the grind completely, mods, bruh. Yes, I agree with that too, but for me personally, it's just. God damn it. Okay, um... Oh, Weber... Okay, Weber didn't screw up. Nice. Um, here's the thing. My plan is once I complete the licenses and all the special events, because having the required level in B-Spec actually opens up those levels in the special events. Anyways, see ya, man. Anyways, um... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the Supercar Festival, but I'm gonna do that one, um, rubber band trick. So I'm gonna grab, like, a janky ass controller from like the flea market or something put a rubber band on the um, right stick so that way it could accelerate and then have that keyboard trick so that way I hold down the enter button so that way I can just keep smashing X into the next event and just use the Red Bull get to level 40 get a bunch of cash and on top of that get a bunch of 1,000 um, uh, 1,000 tickets or car 1,000 or whatever they're called I don't remember That's my plan for level grinding. Because you're going to have to just do a bunch of level grinding anyways to get to Nürburgring, to get to Le Mans. And so I, I want to just focus on getting the level shit out of the way so I can go and have fun with the game. Me too. I, I thought about playing around with the hybrid editor as well. You're trying to guess the segment where you subbed on this channel? Hmm. That's a good question, because I don't remember. Well, Audi TT 1 2. There we go. Twenty-one, twenty-two. Oh, around there? Okay. No, but yeah, I mean, the only reason why I'm not going to just jump to level 40 with the editor GTSB, like I said, the car 1000 tickets. I want to I wanna get a bunch of those from level grinding. Come on, Mark. Go on the inside. You have the extra downforce. There you go. Ah, 
I actually like how they do rolling starts here in this championship. Makes it feel authentic as hell. You know, I tried to... I tried to see exactly. They give us just random cars, so it's technically not cheating. It's technically not cheating, so it's just like... You're doing all the races, and sure, I mean... You're not doing them yourself, but you're not going and just punching in numbers and getting to a certain level or giving yourself a bunch of tickets, you know, like in five seconds. That's the way I look at it. It's just like, dude, if I'm still putting in the effort to, like, put the setup in so that way I can get this money and that way I can get this level shit out the way, hey, it's fair. I'm not doing anything to circumvent the game or anything. So, therefore, don't at me. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Damn, even in these races, the Calibra behind. Sad boy hours for the Calibra. I'm surprised there's no Vauxhall, Astra, or Calibra. And sure, I know they're the same car because it's just different branding and all, but... You know, if... if if anything, I want to see if I can try to get the Vauxhall versions in my A-Spec playthrough, so that way I can sort of break up the monotony. You might just mod my money from 20k to like 10, 15k to make it more authentic. You can, but at the same time, it's like... I, I don't know, it's like, dude, the only cars you're going to find for... The only, like, fast cars you're going to find... Like, the leveling system is going to just... Oh, wait, but you're going to jump to level 40 immediately. Okay, never mind. Forget what I said. Forget what I'm going to say. Because I was going to say, like... Well, you're not going to be able to get, like, a Camaro in the beginning. Because you're going to have to be, like, level 6 or something. But, never mind. I just remembered. You said, I'm going to just jump to... Are you talking about... Uh, Barney, are you talking about my method of using the controller and keyboard, or are you talking about using the garage editor to jump to level 40 right away? Oh, really? The Mercedes is always last for you? That's weird. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> here, here it is. Wait, which Mercedes are you referring to? The CLK or the 190? Because the 190 is all the way in last right now. Oh, Garage Editor? Yeah. It, it pretty much... I mean... Yes, it is, but... I can see why... GTSV wants to go that route, because... You know... Level... Level grinding in this game is super tedious, and not everybody has time for it. I certainly don't have time to get to level 40. Like, I don't have time to... Go and do the 24 hours of Le Mans over and over and over again... To get to level 40 for Nürburgring. Screw that, man. Sure, the Red Bull events give you a ton of XP, but it's still not enough. It's still not enough. Man, Weber's being aggressive in the corners. Yeah, true, Gus. That's very true. I'm pretty sure for the time... Well, I, I don't know. I would say I'm pretty sure for the time, those cars were OP, but then again, I have no idea. Let's find out. Okay, gonna plug in the old Google. Ah, uh, true. Yeah, that's very true. You have a good point there. Okay. See, the thing is, I'm not too familiar with DTM. So I go to DTM.com and, and look up the 1992 season. And the first line is this. 1992 was the year of Mercedes. The AMG Mercedes-Benz 180 Evolution 2.5-16 Evil 2 won a total of 16 races. Klaus Ludwig clinched the first DTM title for the Stuttgart-based brand and thus was the first driver with two DTM titles under his belt. 
16 races? Jesus Christ, that's a lot for this squad. Too bad the car's all the way in the back, though. They did dominate that year, dude. That's what I call Dominadio. <laughs> I'm kidding. Domination. There you go. Yeah. That is domination, dude. Big time. Wait, that's not even a DTM car. The hell is this thing doing here? Oh, I mean, technically, the championship is called German Touring Car. And this is a Grand Touring Car, so... Yeah, I mean, okay. This isn't an official DTM championship. This is just German touring cars. There you go, GTSV. You can stare at it all day now. Here, just for you, remove on-screen data. Right on board with it. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, very true. <laughs> you dominated so many people with this car back in the day. Nice, dude. I mean, like, Grand Turismo 5 was the first game that really opened my eyes on how much I actually sucked back then. Because, you know, like, I understood how to race and stuff and, and, and all that, but then, like, once I actually got into online, I realized that this game was really the turning point in sim racing for me in general because it's just like, well, shit. I, I learned at that point, like, dude, I need... I need to compare myself to other people, I need to practice with other people, etc, etc. And then from there on, I think I'm okay now. I'm alright. <laughs> Ooh, the A4, that's nice. Now the Alpha is probably my favorite one here. God, that car is beautiful. Although technically it's not a German touring car, but... I guess it's DTM, so... That's why this championship is really confusing because it's like, it's called German Touring Car, but it's not DTM, but it includes DTM, but then also includes GT cars, like, I don't know. The more I think about it, the more it hurts my head. So just leave it be. Ooh, pass for a second? Let's get three outies up there, come on. Come on, apt. Kinda not really. <laughs> The COK is my favorite. COK is good. I don't know, man. Like the Alpha is, the Alpha is probably my favorite one out of all the DTM cars. I don't know, man. It's just something about it. It's something. Maybe it's just the livery. It's something about the livery that I just really like so much. And I really like these square body style cars as well. How many more outies do we have? Or apps, I mean. Three. Okay. So, including Weber, Lemaire, and Green. Dude, I didn't even need to buy any upgrades for this car. And look at the lead that Weber has already. Holy crap. 22 seconds. Well, 
You're going to Lamar for sure. Well, duh, because he, he actually raced there. Oh, for GT2? Yeah, dude. Especially when you did the um, license test at Rome Night. Getting gold on that test, dude, it's the most satisfying thing ever. Because that track is so high. It has so many high-speed corners. And it has a special flow to it. Like, you really have to, like, even though it's high-speed, you still need to nail the, the line and hit the apexes at the right times and everything, dude. And that track is just, oh my god, dude. Rome Night is amazing. About to clear sector one now. That's enough hashtags on my end. Yes, I do get it, man. Like, can you imagine an FIA Na uh, Nations Cup race with Group B cars at Grindelwald? That would be like, even if I get wrecked, and even if like I get s smashed into by all the Brazilians, dude, I wouldn't care. I would just be happy that I'm racing at Grindelwald, to be honest. That's how much I missed that track, dude. And a Red Rock Valley would be amazing for stock car racing, like NASCAR and stuff. That would be an amazing NASCAR track. Ooh, E Madden. Stick to football, dude. Not racing. I'm sorry, American football. Sorry to my European guys. Sorry, American football. I'm not talking about that soccer stuff. Oh god, I hate Saints soccer. I, I'm dead serious. I don't call it soccer here. I call it I call it football as well. Oh, he had one called Savage. That's pretty funny. I remember he had one called E Gross, and he just kept calling him Eel Gross. It was pretty funny. Um, stock cars mainly was uh, Gus. Whether it's called like Group S or Group O for ovals, I don't know. Just like, I feel like if you have Blue Moon Bay, you have Broad Bean, and you have Northern Isle, I want some stock cars, even if they're not officially licensed cars from NASCAR. Even if they're like fantasy ones, like Forza Motorsport 4 had, I would still want them to to have stock cars, dude. That and, uh... I'm trying to think what else. I don't know, man. That's really all I can think of in terms of, like, bringing a new group. But really... In terms of race cars, I don't know, dude. That's a really good question. That's a really, really good question. That's hard. <laughs> That's really hard to think about. Well, that's race one down. Now we move on to race number two. Which is going to be at Nürburgring Grand Prix D. GPD, not GPF. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I agree. All right, Nurburgring GPD.
Oh hell yeah, dude! The R32 and R33 the Calsonic GTR plus the Penzo 34, the Unicia Jex R33. No, no, the the Silhouette Formula Skyline from the 80s, the one in GT2, the one you get from the 80s Japanese Festival. Oh my god, dude! That one would be badass to have back in the series. Won't happen, but it would be so cool, dude. That car is like an absolute Gran Turismo legend. All right. Two wide rolling start and 13 laps around Nürburgring GPD. Here we go. No, 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 no. I accidentally hit pit stop. I meant to hit overtake. Well, Weber's doing it all on his own. All right, cool. Okay, there we go. We're good. That thing would shred everything. Oh my god, did imagine? Really, everything, dude. Just give us everything again. <laughs> but honestly, I I'm more concerned. Yeah, same here, GTSV. I'm so glad you can do that. Um, really, what I want more than anything is tracks, dude. That's what I'm mainly concerned with. Like the only, the only track that I really, really, really want back in the series is Laguna Seca. That's it. All right, Mark's chilling behind the BMW. Just a nice and easy start right now. Hong Kong, hell yeah, dude, that one too. I know a lot of people don't like Hong Kong because of its like narrowness and difficulty, but dude, I love street courses. How do you know we're getting Catalonia, GTSV? How do you know that? Soul, yes, that one too, dude. You don't like Seattle Circuit? Well, I can see why. It's really difficult, but dude, I love Seattle. Oh, really? Okay, I'll take a look at it right now. Well, after I get around Goldschmidt. Hey, Hero, how's it going? Thank you for joining the stream. Appreciate it. The test course would be so much fun to come back to. Look at these rural cars going down the back stretch. Beautiful. Ooh, an overtake for first, maybe? Maybe, maybe? No. Alright, I'll go take a look at it right now. It was mentioned by, um, it was mentioned by that, um, by a Spanish gaming publisher. Okay. I'm pretty sure that Sony did not want that out, but hey, that's cool. I, you know, I had a feeling it was going to be Catalonia to begin with. I really had a suspicion because Madrid Games Week, you know, Catalonia, 
Same way, like, during the uh, Six Hours of Fuji, you had, or before that, you had, like, the Fuji Speedway being revealed before. Like, it's, it always coincides with an event and something around that, in my opinion. No, I'm not saying we're getting Las Vegas for the America's Final, but that would be cool, though. That would be cool if we get Las Vegas. You can't read it, though? I mean, I could sort of read it. Like, dude, I am just hoping and praying. I'm hoping and praying that the America's Final is not inside SEMA. Because I want to go so bad, dude, to, to watch as a spectator. Ooh. A little bit of off-track off track action with the Mercedes. And look who's back in dead last. The poor 92 Mercedes. Poor boy. Me too, dude. Me too. You know, my main question is, where is the um, World Final going to be held for the Nations Cup or whatever? Like, the only thing that I can probably guess is, like, the only event that's being held at the end of the year in terms of Sony-related is the PlayStation Expo in Anaheim, California. I highly doubt it's going to be in L.A., but if it is... I think there's like a 1% chance of that happening, but if it does happen there, dude, I will be so stunned. I'll be like, dude, I have to go. Marvin, we have to go. PS Expo. Regardless, I'm going to the PlayStation Expo later this year. If they, that is if it is, it is being held, hopefully. Right. Oh, really? Well, everybody is entitled to their opinion, Gus. Uh, me, I have a huge... Um, Laguna Seca has a huge place in my heart because, number one, that's the first ever real-life racetrack that I've ever learned in a video game, which is Gran Turismo. And number two, well, number two, because that's the first ever racetrack my dad's gone to in the 80s for a cart. And number three, because of cart. <laughs> yeah, Willow is the land of dirt, dude. Willow Springs is scary at night because the track has no lighting and I went for a three hour endurance one time and dude there is no lighting there at all so you, you pretty much have to walk around with a flashlight or use the headlights of the cars as your guidance to get around the track. Let's take a look at the guys behind us. So it's still an Audi A4. Ooh, I like how they're hopping over the chicane. That's awesome. Oh, nice, Gus. That's cool. Where did you do that race at? Ah, Willow Springs. Got it. Almost halfway there. Oh, with a tomahawk. 
That's uh, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> Didn't really expect you to use a tomahawk for a, in, for a mini endurance, but all right. <laughs> You finished second. GG. <laughs> Ooh. Nice little side by side battle for second. Come on, Audi. Don't let them take the spot for you. Come on. Damn it. No team one, two. Boo. Whoa, well, Lane is charging hard. You at least finish on the podium, yeah. Exactly. There's always a positive to everything. Look at it that way. All right, guys. I'm gonna get a drink of water. I'll be right back and answer a phone call. So I'm gonna mute and enjoy the sights and sounds of the Audi TT.
Yeah, guys, I just got off the phone with Red Bull. Red Bull wants to sign me to a 20-year deal, guys. Gus, how did you know? Come on now. Were you looking through my personal email? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now I'm going to I'm going to Knott's Berry Farm later. After the stream's over, I'm going to Knott's. So yeah, going to an amusement park. Awesome. Please. <laughs> Sup, Mikhail? No. Hmm. I don't believe you. How did you know I was talking to my sponsors, huh? I'm I'm playing. All right. Anyways. Enough daydreaming, let's get back to work. Well, work. Weber's doing all the work on his own. Yeah, they're doing the whole not scary farm right now for Halloween. So, uh, yeah, going with a good friend of mine. I'm pretty excited about that. You were just guessing? Well, you guessed them correctly. I'm serious, he did. <laughs> I don't have vlog equipment. I don't have a good camera. So, no vlogs. I'm not doing any vlogs just yet. Two alphas in the field. Two laps to go, by the way. Not really got anything else to say. Engine failures? Crashing? SR down? I don't know, there's many other things to be scared of. So the gap is getting closed down, but Weber, I think Weber's going to win regardless. I mean, he has a huge lead. Yeah, SR down is the most scariest thing. Oh, BLP. BLPs are the scariest uh, scariest thing as well. You ever seen that video where Jordan Taylor posted where it's like a, a, haunt, a horror movie, but the serial killer ends up just being BLP and like it scares him? It's, it's hilarious. I think it's on his Instagram or something. I know for sure it's on Instagram, probably on Facebook too. Oh yeah, they, they saw the stream. They clearly are watching the stream right now, they clearly called me in the middle of the stream to offer me a lucrative contract of nothing. <laughs> yeah, but they were fast as hell anyways, so the freaking BOP was kind of useless. Nothing you can really do when your car is that much superior, and your team just understands the, the Cadillac setup already that much. So out of the final corner, Mark Webber wins in Nurburgring. Sweet. Hey, 
Hey, Devin, what's up, dude? Kind of like OP besides this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Cadillac isn't super OP this year, but it still was. Somewhat. It was a little bit bearable, though, compared to, you know, in terms of competition. There was still some hefty competition from, like, the P2s. Well, Colin Braun, mainly, and Acura. And Nissan, even, but that was really it. The Cadillac still ended up winning a D the DP title, or DPI, or P2 title, prototype title, whatever it's called, whatever they want to call it nowadays. All right, Weber, finish off the championship at the Nurburgring. Por favor, senor. So far, so good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I mean, that's kind of an obvious yes, but <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not that good to be a, ra a professional race car driver. Hell no, dude. First of all, I don't have the fitness for it. And then second, um, there's definitely guys like TRL Lightning and those kind of guys that really deserve it more. Who really put in the work. Like Jimmer and those kind of guys. But anyways, but yeah, I mean, I would accept it. But realistically, I don't, I don't think I'd do a professional racing. At least, at least it, um, it's not realistically going to happen. Alright, well, I was expecting the start to get a little bit crazier as more of a parade than anything. Oh, Mark, not in the back of your teammate, please. I know he looks like Sebastian, but no. Oh, hell yeah, they will. I heard Aston Martin is actually replacing them, aren't they? Like, Aston Martin's coming into DTM, which is going to be interesting, really. Come on, get around the other Red Bull. Audi, come on. App support line. Ooh, it's two Webbers. It's d look, it's M Weber and it's W Weber. So it's like a doppelganger in a parallel universe. Instead of M for Mini, it's W for Wumbo. He's getting close to the rear of the BMW. Come on. Execute a pass. Maybe. Maybe. Here we go. Yep. Got it. Yep. Exactly, uh, Gus. You got that right.
Dude, Weber just kind of ran him almost off the track. Holy crap. Wait, Aston Martin was in Super GT in 2009? Wait, what? I have to look this up. Hang on a second. Okay, it's 2009 Super GT series on Wikipedia. Let's see here. GT500 class. Aston Martin. Oh, the DBR9. That car was classified as a Super uh, GT500 car. Oh, okay. So check this out. For those who aren't familiar, look. There's a link to the Wikipedia article. Team Nova. Ran an Aston Martin only for the first, third, and seventh round. I mean, Mikhail is the expert of Super GT after all, so he would know. He would know. This man would know his Super GT history. Yeah, I, I thought it was a GT3 car as well. But I guess it meant... Well, actually, it's a GT1 car, but I didn't know GT1 cars could race in GT500 in, in the Super GT series. I never knew that. Unfortunately, like he said, not the best attempt, because it would have been cool to see Aston Martin do something good in DTM. But hey, you know, at least they were there, and at least they made the GT500 fields, you know, at least they gave it a non-Japanese car. I know in the late 90s in JGTC there was like the Viper, there was like a Lamborghini and some other stuff, which was cool. I I hope to see that again, to see like non-Japanese cars do the GT500 category with the whole Class 1 thing. It would be super awesome if they could get that together. Yes, they were in the GTE AM category, I think. Alright, what's the rest of the field like? BMW second. CLK, ooh, come on. Let's get the CLK out I'm tired of seeing the M3 in, in the podium spot. Let's get somebody else now, come on. There we go, up to second, cool. Yeah, me too, Gus. I love the camera for the straightaway at Nurgen. Ooh, side by side battle. Audi A4 versus BMW M3. Ooh, and the Alpha, look at him just stuffing his nose inside. Nice. Kind of just bullying the GTR out of the way.
Weber is just putting an absolute ass whooping on the entire field. Eight second lead over the CLK Touring Car, but not only is he being aggressive, these cars have been battling the entire time, which is wasting a lot of time for them. Because time is valuable. And that is your one PSA for the day. Courtesy of the Movie Chicane. And this this advertisement does not is not endorsed by the Movie Chicane in any way possible, blah 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 blah. Small print, small print. See, I'm trying to find something to say because holy crap, Weber is just kicking their asses so much. And yes, I know he's being aggressive and the other guys aren't, but still. He's doing a really good job. Except for this poor Mercedes. Even in the next camera. Oh, sorry, I forgot to read that. You can hear the higher RPMs. Oh, yes, you can, dude. And I'm listening to this with only one headphone because I need to hear myself. <laughs> Seriously, I need to hear my own volume because I don't want to scream off the top of my lungs or anything, you know? Because, you know, obviously, when you have your ears covered, you, you don't really know how loud you are. And therefore, you can just start yelling off the top of your lungs, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to be like Spoonie at E3 that one year, where he kept ye yelling, Betrayal! Betrayal! Like an idiot. Alright, got a little bit of a truly train here for fourth. That Audi TT looks a little bit slower than the other cars, but still holding its own ground. See, this entire train lasts from 4th to 11th, and then this AMG Mercedes 190 all the way in the back. Poor fellow. But of course, our boy Weber is looking good. That's all that matters. Where's his twin? In 4th, okay. Me too, Gus. I feel bad for it, like... Seriously, dude, this thing is so slow. Well, it's not slow in real life, but you know, it's so off the pace compared to the other cars. Let's take a look at the battle for a second. Ooh. That beamer is starting to close the gap. It is. It is. Uh, you can pay a fee, and you can actually drive around the track. It's the tourist layout, so that so that means... You know that pit entry right there on the side of the straightaway? I think there's cones lined in. Yes, it, it is the North Slide. So, there's cones that are lined up, from what I've seen on YouTube. There's cones that are lined up. You go inside, and then you come out of the pits, and there's a set of cones that you have to go through, kind of like a chicane or like an autocross, kind of like man-made little obstacle you go around, and then you just do the whole more side. But I think they do that, so that way, number one, they can probably bring the cars in. You only pay for one lap or something. I don't know. Maybe it's a safety thing. Mainly number two. Maybe it's a safety thing. Because of the fact that you can't go... And they, not you can't. They probably don't want just the amateur arrive and drive drivers to go so fast on the straight and not break for the for the upcoming corner. That's probably why they do that. I think it's the latter, actually. And I don't blame the officials. I mean, dude, Nurburgring is demanding as hell and it's dangerous. With that being said, I want to drive here in real life so bad. Astra on the back is starting to break away from the train a little bit.
Yeah, this is the Green Hill. It Rhino GT4 didn't come up with that name. This is actually the name given to it by... I think Nicky Lauda called it Green Hell. I know in real life it's actually nicknamed the Green Hell. Let's see here. Let's find out. Let's do an investigation. It was Jackie Stewart, actually. Here it is. So, the Nürburgring was famously nicknamed as the Green Hell by Sir Jackie Stewart after he won a 1968 German Grand Prix. Amid a rainstorm and thick fog, the track is probably the most challenging and daunting as one, or daunting one, as it's the longest track at 28.8 kilometers and 73 turns with changing elevations over a course of 300 meters. It has claimed the lives of many over the years, and Nicky Lauder survived an almost fatal crash in 1976, which left his face damaged. After that, no more Formula 1 races took place at the ring. So it was Sir Jackie Stewart who called the Nordschleife the Green Hell. Because this track is hell. This is one of the most dangerous tracks on the goddamn planet. And guess what? Weber wins at it. In the DTM series. Or German Touring Car, I mean. Sorry. Okay. That was easy. Let me go ahead and save the replay for thumbnail purposes. And it's time for a prize car. Okay, so there's our gold trophy. And what do we win? Ooh, I like this. I like these old school German cars. Hell yeah. I'm actually pretty happy with this prize. I'll definitely be using this in the A-Specs sometime. I don't know where, but maybe the beginner rally events? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, at least it's not a Prius and at least it's not a Pink Vitz. You know what? Sure. Late in the game. Ooh, it's in blue as well. Hell yeah. Late in the game, yes, this car is useless. But this car is pretty cool. Oh, I know. I know it's part of the... Um, well, see, the thing is, don't forget that the Alfa Romeo is not German either. But it's a DTM car. And that Lexus ISF racing concept, that was a DTM concept car. So that's why it's eligible. But here it is. Audi Quattro 82. This thing is a really nice car. I love these square body old school 80s cars a lot so next time on gt5 b spec we're gonna do another endurance race i'm not saying which one yet you will see